This is a message from Sharon Davis to Labour Women's Declaration. I've only ever been driven by science or evidence-based argument and my many years of personal experience racing testosterone fueled East Germans during the 70s and 80s who totally dominated women's sport by cheating with illegal substances for two decades, unchecked by the IOC. Many, many young women lost out on their rightful medals back in that period and I'm determined that that mustn't happen again which is why my conscience doesn't allow me to stay silent like so many who have the same views as me. I still very much stand by my quotes that those with a male sex benefit should not be in women's sport because it's hugely unfair and in fact potential very, potentially very dangerous in contact sports. No one should lose medals, places or livelihoods or much worse, get injured or even die, to prove what we already know. Males are stronger than females and that biological sex exists. Our solution cannot be manipulation on testosterone alone because there will always be a residual benefit like male bone structure, bone density, lung capacity, to name just a few physical differences. Putting females at a sporting disadvantage in their own classification. The World Anti-Doping Agency exists to try and catch and eliminate those trying to gain the tiniest edge in elite sports. Why do we bother to do this if fairness doesn't matter? The difference between male and female Olympians is 10 to 31 percent. This is huge when races are won by a hundredth of a second. The woman who beat me in Moscow and had a 9% advantage proved by DDR papers found after the war came down. This was the average benefit putting young girls on testosterone through puberty gave them and the DDR doctors showed this. 9% would have put her 16 seconds behind me, not even qualifying her for the race. We have categories in sport to create fairness, for example, weight, sex, age, classifications in para sports, or should we not bother with any of these if fairness for one huge group, females, is no longer important? The only obvious solution to enable biological females equal opportunities of success in sport and thereafter the financial rewards they should be entitled to in a just society, the same as their male, male counterparts, is a protected female classification and an open and fully inclusive classification or even add in a classification because sport is for all but first and foremost must be fair or it makes a mockery of why we have rules in sport at all. We have had men and women sport for decades, so that equality of opportunity exists. Sport, by its very nature, is hugely affected by human biology. Women have had an almighty battle to get the same opportunities as men, and at last we seem to be doing that, though there is still a very long way to go. A feeling cannot supersede a proven fact. The science must overcome first. Well over two years ago, I gathered over 60 signatures in just a weekend from the world of sport, all world champions or Olympic medalists, and wrote to the IOC asking that the science be commissioned before any rule changes. This wasn't done. Most of those 60 are petrified of their names coming out. This is wrong in a free speech society. If respectful debate can be had, I'm sure that solutions can be found. Trans activists and bullying organisations cannot be allowed by threats and name calling to close down conversations that are primarily based on peer-reviewed science and mainstream thought. There is, and can be in fact, must be, space for everyone in sport. But like society, sport must be fair and give equal opportunities of success to all.